Megan Hicks of I Run Far, and I'm here at the finish line of the 2016 Western States 100. I'm with men's second place finisher, Didrik Hermanson. How does it feel to have finished second place at Western States? <laughs> As I was telling you, I mean, um, physically, I feel okay right now. Mentally, very, very, very happy. I'm really, really satisfied. You know, us Americans here in the U.S., we have a perception of what our race is, what our iconic Trail 100 race is. And I'm always curious about what people outside of, outside of the country think about Western states. So um, entering into this race, knowing that this was going to be one of your races for the year, what impression does a person like you have of a race like this before you come over and do it? I mean, uh, this race, I think uh, it's on the bucket list of every ultra runner, uh, historically and uh, iconically. Uh, it's just, it's been on my bucket list for at least a couple of years now. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Okay. Uh, but you know, it's it's also, the, the courses are different here in, uh, back in Europe. Europe, the, the mountains are much steeper. Here it's much more runnable. The whole the whole course is, is at least it's supposed to be runnable. <laughs> Hypothetically runnable. Yeah. <laughs> People say that, but uh, yeah, I wasn't running uh, uh, all the time <laughs> for sure. And also, I mean, the heat uh, is. Uh, I think that was the main thing, and uh, that, I, I think that was the one of the things I was uh, focusing the most on in the front of the race. To, to keep yeah. cool, try to keep cool, and also in my in my workout before the weeks before prior to the race, um, as as much as I could. Uh, it's not, uh, it's never going to be like this in Norway. But uh, actually, it's been uh, yeah a little bit of summer, so it hasn't been okay. that bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean that's it for me. Considering somebody like you, that's a big question that I have. You. You're from Norway. You possess Northern European blood. Like the genetics for performing well in, in oh, yeah, heat probably said, okay. aren't there. Yeah, so this yeah, is something that you have to uh, adapt John's, to in your training uh, and then on race day. John's. Yeah. I you was, felt okay? or you I was felt... hoping for snow the whole uh, <laughs> first part of the course. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, uh, the heat almost knocked me down. Okay. I feel uh, several times. I was uh, especially in the last part down to Rekichaki, uh, when it, it, the red, uh, very dry uh -huh. road and no no shadow, just the sun. So I was, uh, I mean the the bath, <laughs> yeah. the little swim over of the river was. Uh, that was refreshing. Very, very. <laughs> and then. Is it okay uh, if I stay here for a little yeah. while? <laughs> <laughs> and I said that, and I also said to the. To all the guys at the aid station, uh, especially I, 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 I had a crush for strawberry. <laughs> so uh, at every station where they have strawberry, I, I was telling them, can I stay? Can I stay? No, you have to run. You have to keep <laughs> yeah. going. So I did that. So talk about how your race played out. You were sort of in the middle of the men's top 10, basically from the get go. Yeah, I mean, this is my first uh, or my second attempt, but my first uh, finish uh, 100, 100 miler. So I. It's a long, it's a long day, so I was planning to, to do my own thing uh, from the beginning, but also try to to find some uh, other nice guys to, to run with. I didn't want to, to run uh, alone. Uh, still, I did that for uh, some miles in the beginning. Uh, eventually, I, I caught up with the with the other guys, uh, number four, five, six. So we were a little uh, group uh, running together, mm -hmm. and then uh, I ran together with uh, Thomas Lebranche for quite a long time, uh, almost all the way to, to Michigan Bluff. Okay. And from then, Andrew was passing me the last uh, climb up to Michigan Bluff. Um, so I think the canyons went uh, went well. I don't think that was the uh, that was the worst part. Okay. Uh, I tried to, yeah, I think I managed to to cool down uh, very well. Uh, but then I think the heat was uh, starting to get me okay. down to, to the river, and I mean from uh, Green Gate I was uh, I was done. <laughs> you were done. Yeah, Cooked. I was done. I was uh, having a hard time eating and drinking, so I couldn't uh, keep uh, keep uh, that. <laughs> right. So uh, I was diving into every creek, uh, even if it was a little muddy creek. Right. Uh, try to to cool down. 
uh, and just try to, to keep up the pace as good as uh, possible all the way to, to the finish. And you did. I mean, your splits to the finish don't really belay the fact that you weren't feeling as well as, as the numbers were. No, I mean, <laughs> Andrew had the only minute to me at the river, so... For sure, I lost uh, some minutes. Uh, but that's, but that's usual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, I, I managed to keep uh, keep up uh, quite well, and yeah. uh, I mean, uh, second place is. Uh, I'm really, really happy. This is your second attempt at 100 miles. We watched you have your first go of it at Ultra Trail Mount Fuji last fall. Yes. What did you go into this race? doing differently. You said you wanted to go out a little more conservatively mm -hmm. and that you must have feel like you successfully did that. Do you have any other differing approaches? I've done some uh, a little bit uh, other uh, things uh, try to eat a little different. Okay. Uh, like different a little, foods, a little less uh, sugar. I don't okay. think uh, normally I don't eat uh, eat sugar. <laughs> Stomach that was the big issue. Yeah, and it was an issue now as well. Okay. But uh, perhaps I also just uh, mentally was prepared that uh, it's going to be it's going to be hard. Perhaps I wasn't that in uh, in uh, at Mount Fuji. So I don't just think I I was I was puking, and then uh, when I <laughs> got it, got it all out, I felt actually okay. Oh, I'm okay. And then I kept on to the next stage station, tried to get some. Sometimes it went well, other times it doesn't. It didn't, and I was uh, do the same again. So, and the miles were uh, <laughs> rolling on. <laughs> you are known in Northern Europe for your leg speed and excelling in races that have runnable terrain. Mm. How would you rate the runnability of the Western States Hundred Course? From uh, zero to ten, <laughs> I will say a ten. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's very very runnable. So. I was hoping my legs were feeling a little bit better uh, at the Green Gate, uh, that, as uh, as everybody say. If you if you, if you have something, uh, if you have uh, fresh legs at uh, at Green Gate, you can catch up uh, several minutes. So I was hoping for that, but uh, and use my my speed, uh, speedy legs. But uh, uh, yesterday I didn't. Not quite there. No. Okay. But uh, in the beginning, I could uh, <laughs> I could see the speed the Americans. <laughs> so in Europe, uh, yes, uh, perhaps I'm the speedy guy and the slow mountain guy. But uh, here, I think it's uh, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. The Americans are really really fast. Last question for you, and this is something you'll probably get over and over in the coming weeks. By finishing in the men's top 10, you earn an automatic bib entry for next year. So you would possess the M2 bib coming back. What do you think about a second go at Western States? Do you think about improving upon time, place, position? I mean, uh, is that the right question the day after? <laughs> no. no, but yes, kind of. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, for sure, I want to come back. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, UTMB, uh, and after that, I I haven't made made any more plans. Okay. So next year, uh, I decide uh, later. But uh, I mean, the, the race and the course and uh, the history, everything. Uh, yeah, for sure. M2. Wow, I really M2. want to come back. Yeah. We'll see you next year then. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Well done, Didrik. Thanks.